Have you ever noticed that all software websites look exactly the same? Exactly the same! Now, maybe the software engineers are just getting a little unoriginal, but SaaS websites are arguably some of the nicest out there. Nicer than some of the websites I make. So today, we're gonna do what I do best. Steal from 50 software landing pages to get to the bottom of why they're so much better than my designs and then make some goaded layouts out of them. Now, you probably thought we were starting off with why all the header sections all look exactly the goddamn same. But there's an even more common section on software websites. And no, it's not the footer. It's this. Logos. Lots and lots of logos. On 41 of the 50 softwares I looked at, all of them had well-recognized logos. Because if a Fortune 500 company isn't using your software, then you don't belong here. DesignJoy even has the logos of clients they've worked with in two separate places on the same page. And we're so well trained that with no other context, we just automatically assume that these are important companies that use the software. That said, there are two main ways of going about this. Up here is the simple way, the way that I like, where you just take your most important logos, throw them across the screen, and you're good to go. However, if we're getting a little fancy, and we probably should, then down here is the bougie one, where we would have a marquee animation with these logos sliding across the screen left to right. And then on the edges, we have a gradient as well as a progressive blur to slowly blur out those images. And I should mention that everything we go through on this Figma file will be available for you guys to download in the description down below. On the complete other side of social proof with logos is what I like to call shitting on your competitors. And it's more common than you think. Coda sorta does this strategically with a testimonial to do it for them, but Basecamp is a little more shameless, pretty much telling you to get rid of everything else. Anyways, we're getting sidetracked. Okay, I got you with that little bait and switch there, but we actually do have to address why this is everywhere. Of the designs I went through, we've got Magie, Betterstack, Catalog, Serif, Dropbox, Monday, GitHub, ClickUp, Miro, Loop, MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, Intercom, Clavio, Mercury's First Cell, Superhuman, Ghost, Copilot, C-Steam, Juno, Butter, Decodable, Pitch, Beehive, Workleap, all using exactly the same layout. And I'm not even counting the landing pages that had left aligned text like Linear. Now, we could go in depth on the UX of why companies typically favor this layout, but let's be honest. Ain't nobody got time for that! So instead, let me make it stupid simple for you. Big text, big image, lots of space, and all of a sudden you're scrolling looking for more information without even knowing about it. However, if everyone is using the same layout, then we're going to need to get a little more creative to differentiate ourselves. Magier, Magier, Magier does a great job of this by using this nifty little font and having this little inline diagram. For the full size image, ClickUp pulled out all the stops to make this interactive. More on that in the next section. Other than that, the dashboard that I'm using here is from a previous video where we designed it, so go check that one out if you haven't seen that. And the last thing is I added a very subtle gradient here, so if I turn off the background, you'll see that it becomes a little more bland and boring. One of the slightly more complex sections that these software sites love is this. Sections in web design aren't overly well named, so I've taken the liberty to call it the clickable multi-section, because it's clickable and has, well, multi-sections. Miro decided to pop off using the horizontal and vertical versions of this four times in their homepage. Some are more complex with automatic switching and a timer like Webflow, but if you're like me and don't really want to do all of that, something like MongoDB's layout is probably a little better. Just make sure to design all the tabs so you don't hand it off to a dev or the client, and like half the site's missing. This is my interpretation of the clickable multi-section, and you'll see that I have gone ahead and in fact designed all of the sections here, so I didn't leave you with just one section and the rest of them are empty. It seems that modern designs are shifting away from graphics that require a $30,000 NVIDIA GPU to render. Like, seriously, who hurt this designer? Oh my god. Softwares typically prefer simple and tasteful animations, like on Welcome, Pipe, or Clavio. The key is not to be a lazy bum and actually do these well. This isn't a hover interaction, but for example, on Coda, they have a scroll interaction that is cool, but I can tell it's imported from a third party since it's slightly blurry on my screen, which you may or may not be able to see with the YouTube compression. So make these, make them simple, and make them well. Alright, so this section we're going to talk about more in the next part of the video, 
But for the animations themselves, just some simple hover effects that I've made with Smart Animate. Don't go overboard, don't make it crazy. Simple and well put together is always better. For the next one, if you're not following some trends, then what's the point of even being a software company? I am, of course, referring to the bento layout here. But not just any bento layout. Apple arguably popularized these, but bentos like this are crazy to put together and better for marketing purposes. However, software sites do have what I've proclaimed to be the simple bento. The collaboration software Butter has these all over their website in a variety of different layouts. Kit has something similar, but probably my favorite is Ramp's bento that has a slightly tilted card in there. As the name heavily implies, we're sticking to some pretty simple grids so our dev doesn't rip us a new one, but we're still leaning into the trends so we can say we have some vision. And as you previously saw, this is the simple bento that I've put together, and that's all I have to say about it. Speaking of vision, something I'm seeing more and more is what I've termed the straight line grid. Something like this sick section on Vercel is what I'm talking about. Instead of having these floating around, we keep these grids in there. On a side note, check out these interactions. That must have taken forever. Catalog is another good example that really likes to use their line grids, once again with tasteful animations. This is a very simple example that I've gone ahead and put together because we also have something similar going on in the header that I showed you guys earlier. And last, but probably my favorite, images in the nav. Now in this day and age of TikTok and OnlyFans, people don't really pay attention very long. And they definitely don't read all the copy you spent hours crafting. So make their life and your life a little easier by adding some images. Most SaaS sites have giant dropdowns like Intercom, but even if you've got a small website, something like what Pipe has looks really professional and works well. Of all of the design trends of 2025, I think this one's really gonna stick. And I think there's good reason for that. These are just so much more appealing to look at than just lists and lists of links that go somewhere that we don't even know. At least here, at a quick glance, you get some more context behind where you're going before you actually go there. And that's it. Subscribe, get the Figma link down below, and join my design community. Adios.